Hey guys, hope you're all good today. Previously we saw the basic concepts of the filter transformation. We learned what the filter transformation is. Filter transformation basically filters out the, the rows based on a condition. The rows that do not meet the condition are simply discarded. Today we'll take a look at an example of the filter transformation. We will load the employees data into the target table only for those employees which have the department ID as 50. So let's move over to the Informatica designer and let's connect to the repository using the password Oracle. Let's open the trainings folder. Here we'll create a new mapping first. So let's create a new one and name it as M underscore employees underscore employees underscore filter okay so now first let's take a, take a look at the data source the source database which is the employees table from the HR database so and take a look at the rows that we have in there so let's connect using the SQL Assistant. Connect to the test one ODBC connection. With the username HR and the password HR as well. Okay. So let's select steric. Select <coughs> steric from employees where the department underscore ID department underscore ID is equal to fifty. Let's execute this. Okay, maximize this and we can see that we have 45 rows over here for all the department 50 ID. So this means that 50, 45 rows should move to the target table now. Let's move back to the designer and let's start creating the mapping now. First we'll import the source, drag and drop the source which we've already imported, the HR's employee table. Now let's bring in the target the target database's employee table. Drag and drop this over here. Now, what we need to do is that we need to bring in the expression, the filter transformation. So this over here, the funnel shows the filter transformation. So let's bring it over here <clears throat> and drag and drop all the source qualifier columns into the filter transformation. Now double click on the transformation to enter its properties. Here let's rename it and name it as FLT underscore department underscore 50. Click OK. Now let's go to the ports. Where you can see that all the ports are input and output over here. Now we'll go to the properties tab and here the filter condition is by default set as true which means all the rows will pass through it. But we need to pass only the rows which have the department ID equal to 50. So yeah, validate this, click OK, and then apply it. OK, now let's select all the rows from the filter transformation and populate the target table from it. <coughs> OK. Here you can see the overall mapping that we've just created. So let's save our work and then we shall create a session and a workflow for it to run. The mapping has been validated. So let's go to the workflow manager now. Okay, here let's create a new workflow named as WF underscore employees underscore employees underscore 
filter. Click OK. <clears throat> now create a session for the newly created mapping. The employees filter mapping. Click OK. Connect the session to the start of the workflow. Let's double click on the session to enter its properties. First we'll rename it and remove the MN underscore for naming convention purposes. And then select the fail parent if task fails. Now select the source database connection as HR and the target database connection as target. No other properties need to be set over here. So let's move over to the config objects. Over here, we'll select the save session log for five runs and stop on errors property as one. Let's move over to the mappings tab. <coughs> yeah, over here in the source qualifiers connection, we'll set this to the connection variable dollar source. Next, in the target database, set the connection as dollar target. Click OK. Select the target load type as normal and select the truncate table option as well. Nothing else to be set over here. All done. Click apply. OK. Now save your work. <coughs> it's validated. Now let's run the workflow and see how it works out. In the monitor over here, you can see that the job is running. Expand this. It's filtering out rows, so it'll take some time. Okay, now you can see the 45 rows have been sent to the target table. Now, let's first take a look at the session log for this session and see how things worked out. Maximize this. And if you scroll down, we can see that how many rows were taken from the source and how many of them were written to the target. For example, over here, you can see that the employees table for the target database is being loaded and 45 rows were loaded into it. So now let's go to the target database and see what the data has been loaded in the table. Let's open a new instance for this SQL assistant. We will connect to the test one ODBC connection using the target credentials, which are the username is target and the password is target as well. <coughs> okay, now over here we'll select steric from the employees table. Execute this. And you can see that 45 rows were returned and all of them have the uh, department ID 50. So now we know the use of a filter transformation. It is a really useful thing and it should be used as close as possible to the source qualifier so that unwanted rows are eliminated in the beginning. In the coming video, we'll see another use of the filter transformation, which where it will be used for the condition for monitoring the sources. So till then, stay with us and thank you very much. Bye bye.